Hi, I'm Dr. Philip McMillan. Thank you for joining me again. And um, sorry if I've missed you for some time as I've worked through quite a number of things and um, I'll be sharing with you some more details, hopefully, of our upcoming conference from Doctors Federation for the World. But <clears throat> today I wanted to talk a little bit about AIDS and COVID-19. And you have to understand that I have always come from the angle that severe COVID-19 is a viral mediated autoimmune disease. That means essentially it's not the virus that kills someone, it's the immune system, kind of like what would happen in the bee sting. It's not the bee venom that kills someone in anaphylaxis, it's the response of the immune system to the venom. And so that's an important point. And I always try and find ways to highlight that what we're seeing in COVID-19 around us in the data is demonstrating these facts all the time. So <clears throat> I'm focused now on AIDS, which is Acquired Immunodeficiency Syndrome. And um, essentially, this is a condition where because of an HIV virus, it strips the body of specific immune cells. And certainly the macrophages and CD4 cells that are important for fighting any kind of viral infection, bacterial infection actually as well. And so by focusing on this, I am shifting over to preparing a substack. And just to remind you all, if you haven't yet joined, kindly remember to join me on substack for more posts, podcasts, and videos. The link is just below here. <clears throat> And so I'll be sharing with you, this is a post that I'm building at the moment, so I haven't quite finished it as yet. And it's focused again on the HIV COVID paradox in Africa. And it was highlighting Mozambique specifically because it has the second highest mortality just behind South Africa. And critically, I was looking at the death rate in Mozambique here and their cumulative death toll is only 2,224, even though they have 32 million people and 1.6 million people living with HIV. So this is a kind of thing that, as I said, doesn't seem to make sense. How does that fit in the context of a severe viral illness causing severe disease? So a recent paper had come out and they were focused on, sorry, um, they were focused on <clears throat> looking at severe illness after post-vaccination COVID-19 breakthroughs in adults with and without HIV in the US. <clears throat> Their study was looking at about 3,600 patients with breakthrough COVID-19. Interestingly, they found that there was overall no difference between the persons with HIV and the persons without HIV. They found that people who had a CD4 count less than 350 had an increased risk. And that's essentially what the study was looking at. But I have, of course, focused in on the fact that why is it that patients who have HIV, which is an immune disease, where there is some degree of immune suppression, why would they not have the most severe disease in COVID-19? It remains that the severe disease in COVID-19 remains to being things like obesity, hypertension, diabetes, not HIV. So as I move along with this, um, this analysis, they were talking about some of the limitations here with regards to it, but as I go even further into their supplementary material, you'll, you'll find that in the, in the link at the bottom. And the supplementary material here highlights an important thing. Um, AIDS before vaccinated, they found that 29 patients um, of this had been hospitalized with severe COVID-19. Of those 29 patients, only three died. And these are patients with AIDS fully vaccinated, but they didn't die. That tends to fit with what we are seeing in Africa. In Africa, 1.6 million people who have HIV in the first or the second wave, they didn't die either. And that's largely, in my opinion, because this was not about the immune system being weak. 
Severe COVID-19 is more to do with the fact that the virus in specific comorbidities will trigger an immune response. That's what I've always been focused on. And similarly, we had a study looking at um, HIV in the UK. This was the Open Safely, where they took a look at, um, I think the total number, they looked at 17 million adults, of which they found 27,480 had HIV. And <clears throat> when they looked at the numbers from this, uh, this is essentially what they would have found is that when they look at the absolute cumulative COVID-19 mortality, it was low with less than 0.1% of people dying with HIV. That's significant. You would expect in a viral disease that is spreading all through the world and in theory is the cause of severe disease, that certainly HIV patients and a patients with AIDS would be the ones who would die. These are the unusual patterns that we see in COVID-19 where that doesn't happen. And this is why I keep on encouraging scientific community, medics, to stop and reflect on the science. Because the science indicates that even people who have severe immune disease don't necessarily get severe COVID-19. Actually, when I looked at one of the very important parts of that paper, and I'll show you here, <clears throat> if you actually look at the um, adjusted risk in terms of uh, severe disease, right down the middle here is what you would consider to be zero <clears throat> or no significant risk. If you were with HIV with zero comorbidities, you're right on the center. The minute you add in age, any comorbidities, um, smoking, obesity, um, if you're older, suddenly your risk goes all the way up. Certainly if you're black, it's significant, 4.31%. But when it is without comorbidities, it's right on the center. And in theory, that shouldn't make any sense. In a disease where the immune system is affected, you should have much more severe disease. Now, it could be argued that many patients are on antivirals, but the antivirals that they're on don't actually impact SARS-CoV-2. And so in theory, therefore, they, these antivirals shouldn't help. And similarly, as I mentioned before, when you go back to Africa and you look at the case in Mozambique, and Mozambique, remember, second highest mortality in the world with 1.6 million people with HIV, and they wouldn't have access to all the healthcare, the numbers who have died, 2,224. So as I said, <clears throat> I want you to think about these things, certainly learn about it. I'm hopefully going to be putting together more information that's easier to digest. Um, for people to understand some of these points when I talk about a viral mediated autoimmune disease. But these are the points that I want people to understand. The more you understand, the less anxious you will become about what is happening. And the more that you know, the more you can help others. So that's my principle for day, today. Remember, join me on Substack. I'll finish off that posting in a short time and you'll be able to see and learn a bit more about what's happening in Africa and my thoughts about what it is the connection between HIV and AIDS and COVID-19. Have a great evening.